Not go too hard, just stay consistent. So if you manage the pacing correct in Ironman, you are one. So that's why I do a bit pacing behind the car, because it's easier to limit myself. We didn't have space in our car, so Mikal has to do the riding, transport riding. Gustav told me he had two 
240, 272 in average so far. So it's on the higher limit, but looks uh, okay. Talking, also Lionel talking a bit, so yeah, all good. <laughs> want another great day to come <laughs> and it will so on behalf of Ben Rausa your race director our champions Gustav Fiede and Heather Jackson what kind of class is that for them to come back to this finish line that is fantastic entire crew Tom Zimbar, Eric Nielsen and Fred Rizmi I'd like to have it everybody on behalf of Business Head of all city, Iron Man Florida. Uh, I'm Robert Kalin, I'm a Swedish triathlete, uh, 26 years old, and I'm living in Gothenburg. I have like two big uh, bucket list uh, goals for the Ironman distance. One is to qualify for the Kona, and one is to go under eight hours. Uh, my expectations was that uh, ex gain experience for the Ironman distance race, uh, since it was my first, first one I didn't know like exactly what to expect. But I was pretty confident uh, with my swim and bike ability, so the plan was to start the run a bit fresh. But uh, yeah, I raced, I raced it like, like, like according to plan in the swim and bike in the first lap of the run. Then it started to be really hard on the second lap. Uh, what did you think yeah, during the swim? Did you have any idea it took so long? No, I actually didn't. Uh, think about the time at all uh, like during the swim or the bike but when I started the run I looked at like what the time was and tried to calculate uh, how much time I spent on the on the swim because I, I knew the time on the bike from the bike computer and then when I saw that it was like yeah the minutes was 48 uh, I must yeah I calculated yeah, calculated that the swim must have taken like almost an hour and then I was pretty shocked because with a 404 bike split I thought that I would have more time to uh, more time for the run to go under eight hours <laughs> did you think about uh, that the camel work and I know was in the swim group? Uh no I tried to look back uh, after the first loop uh, and I saw that that we were like seven eight people in, in the group so I didn't know that they were in the group, but uh, I guess that they weren't uh, far far behind since we were, uh, uh, yeah, uh, such a large group compared to the feel of the of the men's pro. How was the biking? Was it hard? Um, not that hard. I, I, I like like the first half. I was uh, in the back of the pack with like five people, and then Worth dropped out, and we were four people. Uh, Gustav, Lionel, me and Gu, and um, yeah, since Gustav and Lionel already had their Kona spot, uh, I knew that we were two people that hadn't the Kona slot, and 
uh, and there were two places to go there. So after the second uh, half, I tried to help Lionel and push push my watt a bit higher uh, to keep the pace and extend our lead. Uh, so I don't think that the bike was so hard. Like I I went according to plan. Uh, if you look at my watts number, so uh, yeah, it was it was a good bike leg. Um, I followed the nutri nutrition plan. Uh, on the bike, it was pretty cold in the beginning, and then the temperature rised in the end. Um, and when I look back at it, maybe I should have drank a bit more water in the end of the bike and the first loop of the run, uh, because I think that uh, in the end of the run I lacked a bit of the de dehydration, um, because on the first uh, lap on the run I was so excited to go fast that uh, I didn't slow down in the aid stations so uh, I didn't get so much water in those water cups uh, but on the second lap I tried to slow down and take in as much water and coke as uh, possible uh, to regain some some of my dehydration uh, so it started to be a bit better but in the end it was just to survive <laughs> How was your preparation into the race? Would you have done anything different? Um, yes, I would. Uh, like, I haven't focused on the Armen distance for so long. So, uh, for my next one, I will have uh, more focus on the Armen distance. Uh, my main goal uh, for this US trip was like to get uh, was actually to uh, do good in the world, the 70.3 World Champs. Uh, so I've only focus for Ironman distance since then and it hasn't been so many weeks uh, since that race so I guess that I would have done more Ironman training and more specific Ironman training uh, for my next one I mean longer longer bike uh, training sessions uh, more more long runs and also try to uh, try to add some race pace or around race pace on those longer runs uh, so yes you get like a feeling of how it's gonna be in the end uh, it's not it's never gonna be like the same as a race but when you build fatigue during a longer a longer training period uh, you get uh, you get almost the same and with a lot of longer longer rides and longer runs, I think that uh, you're gonna increase your endurance. Um, my tip is to take take it easy in the beginning and uh, pace it right and have a good nutri nut nutrition plan and uh, take in more fuel and water than you think that is necessary and. Um, yeah, try to try to enjoy enjoy it. Like we do it, we do it for fun. So yeah, just try to enjoy enjoy the race. Um, yeah, like focus on your thing and do what what you like. Like I'm not fully professional. Uh, I work part time as a traffic engineering at uh, New Consult. Uh, so I like that more than like focus on social media and Instagram and yeah those those things so yeah I think I'd rather do a bit more work or uh, at yeah my real job than do uh, work at uh, social media and with sponsors uh, so do your thing is my tip Last day of travel and it's done. I managed to have it in one piece for, I don't know, since uh, 18th of September. So almost two months and the last day here, I drop it. So, um, yeah. Oh. oh, here we go. What? Where? How is this? Oh yeah.
welcome back to the channel um, didn't get any footage from the race and uh, this was the only time we got the chance to do do the post race interview so sorry for the bad sound in advance but um, yeah hopefully it works good enough for you guys and we're sacrificing a lot here now it's so awkward speaking English to my brother we usually never speak English so we are really suffering for you guys now, so I hope you appreciate it. Yeah, we put in a big effort for you, so... So Gustav, I have some questions for you. Yeah. Yeah. What was your uh, expectation and plan for the race in Florida? Uh, I never thought I was going to race Florida. Every effort I made was going into Sacramento and... Um, to be honest, I don't think I would perform as well there. I think I would have the same plan, but uh, I don't think I would execute as well. So my expectations uh, was always to try to be around uh, Jan Ferdano and see where the limit, limit was or where the best ones were. But uh, it, uh, it was good in Florida. I really appreciated the opportunity to race Sanders. And even though he has not performed as well as uh, Fredeno the last uh, years, because yeah, Fredeno has been on another level, it was such a valuable learning to race against the best. And um, yeah, that's that was my, my ambition also, to go into the race and learn as much as possible, and I really did learn. So the preparation got a little bit uh, different because of the postponement or the moving of the race, but how do you think the last two weeks, the changes there went for you? I think it was pretty good that we had the last uh, two weeks. Uh, like I, I had a bit of a sickness the last week into Sacramento, which uh, kind of ruined it a bit for me. So I was really happy they moved it to, uh, to Florida. But uh, yeah, the last two weeks I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot more race pace effort because uh, I think if we did the same preparation again we wouldn't go to the altitude as close to the race as we did for the Sacramento race so being in altitude for two or lowland for yeah, two and a half weeks before the race in uh, in Florida was absolutely perfect and uh, I think without them I wouldn't as perform as good so we took a lot of learning from there is there anything else you would have done different, not spoiling too much for your uh, competitors? Uh, maybe a bit... Uh, I don't know, maybe not the altitude is the right way to do it so close to an Ironman. But other than that, it's hard to say. I don't think I would tolerate that much more training because I was kind of on the balance on getting sick a couple of times in altitude, but I managed to stay healthy. So like training volume wise, I don't think I could have done too much more. And then it's more about balancing out what I would have done. And uh, I think our program was pretty good. So uh, yeah, we have to analyze a bit more to find out what to do better. And we get to the Christian questions later and then we can discuss maybe a little bit more. So the race. What did you think during the swim? Did you feel that it was super long or did you think about it? I mean, I don't have the same experience uh, for this kind of distance. So uh, the last race I did was a Super League and that was a 300 meter swim. So it felt long, but I didn't have any like feeling of how long it, it was supposed to feel. But uh, yeah, on the way back, I felt a lot of uh, waves and uh, kind of rough waters. I was just following the leader and the pace wasn't that hard for me I yeah I swam with uh, the lead pack but I had no uh, desires to go to the front I was just hoping that uh, the pace was high enough that everyone wasn't there and at a halfway point I saw, I saw Sanders and Cameron and that group and I was thinking bam this is slow this is like slow slow but uh, yeah, I didn't bother go to the front and push the pace anyway because uh, yeah, it was my first Ironman and I didn't have any yeah, I don't know. I didn't have any plans to swim hard, so I was just staying there. And then moving on to the um, 
to the bike? Was it hard? Is the power on Strava right? <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, the power on Strava is right in terms of my readings for uh, my power meter, and my power meter is pretty accurate. I think I don't know actually, but I think it's pretty accurate. I mean, when I ride the dare to ride turbos it's uh, it's about the same so it's maybe reading a bit low because of the drivetrain loss and efficiency there so the crank should measure higher than the turbo but it's uh, it's hard to say I'm just freaking efficient and aerodynamic and have the fastest wheels position helmet suit you name it and I got it so um, yeah I think I am really fast in general but maybe the power is on top of that a bit low. And um, how was the biking? Was it hard or did you feel like you had to push at some point? Or uh, yeah, I had to push some points. So it was a section where um, Sanders passed me quite early. I had a lead out of the water or out of transition and I was just riding my prescribed pace or power. And then when Sanders passed me, he obviously wants to kind of put the pressure on me in the start. And uh, for me, it was it was kind of hard. But the hardest part was not knowing if this was this was his race pace or if he was trying to like keep the pressure up a bit when passing. So uh, and that was one hard section. And the other hard section was a bit after the first turnaround, where Sanders went to the front again after Cameron had been pulling. And uh, yeah, he was trying to drop us again, I kind of think, I don't know. But uh, that was kind of hard, but the rest was pretty okay. So you felt um, yeah, good or had energy going into the run? Yeah, the bike was for sure not as hard as I thought it would be. I thought maybe going into the run it was a feeling of uh, emptiness and kind of being drained of energy. But that was absolutely not the case. I got, uh, yeah, I, I felt pretty okay. I did a, a race pace kind of session two weeks or one week before. And um, I think I did 190k together with uh, Robert. And I was so drained of energy afterwards. I was feeling so hungry and just, my glucose level were so low and I was kind of worried I was going to feel the same going into the run but luckily I didn't feel the same at all. So the run and I think I've never seen you so insecure and like not worried but what is going on and after the uh, after race we saw um, a Lionel said to the um, commentators Gustav <laughs> where are you faking it <laughs> and where are you faking it? Uh, no, I wasn't faking it, but I was I was honestly really worried in the start because Sanders didn't run with a GPS watch, so he didn't know how fast we were running. And uh, I just looked down and I say 3.25 in my pace per K. And I wasn't trained to run 3.25 at all. So uh, I was, I wasn't kind of, I wasn't tired there, I was just more afraid that this was, this was, this was going to last for the whole race and I'm not yeah, trained for it, so uh, I didn't fake it, but I was kind of like more worried than tired, so I think I showed my, my worried face more than my tired face. And. Um... How was the run? Like you dropped him at 17 miles. Yeah. Did he increase the pace or did he drop it? And uh, yeah, he was running pretty, um, pretty consistent. Um, he dropped a bit. Like it went uh, kind of slower, but not really. And uh, I was really hoping that he would either drop me or I would drop him. Because running together like that for the whole way, I didn't have the nurse for it. It was uh, too scary. <laughs> Not scary, but uh, yeah, too hard, I guess. But uh, when he finally dropped, my uh, worriedness disappeared. I realized that he was not built for 325. And uh, I accelerated again. And I should never have done that. 
I ran maybe 6k too hard and then it hit me the last few k and I really struggled the last bit but I must say I can I'm kind of glad I also did it because if I if I didn't have like the wall hitting me towards the end I think maybe this comes off a bit of a douchebag kind of thing to say but then my Ironman debut would be too easy and I would go to the finish line feeling too good so having the struggle towards the end I, I think it was good for me mentally or else I would be too hard to deal with right now so I really felt the distance towards the end Jonas commented once that he looks at uh, Linus videos for uh, motivation so if Jan you're looking now we will get the answer from Gustav <laughs> would he have beaten you uh, it's so hard to say. I mean, the dynamics of the race would be totally different. The swim would be much faster, but it's still like a super slow swim because the conditions were horrible with the current. So, uh, and I, I honestly think that Sanders and Wirth would have caught up with us on the bike, and then it would still come down to the run. And I mean, the run. I don't know. I felt pretty good there so um, I think Jan would have a challenge beating me but I can't say anything for sure okay that's a good good enough answer you want, push. you want a yes or no I don't want to push you anymore yeah. or do you want to say a yes or no uh, no I would only say yes or no if I actually are sure yeah. yeah so I don't want to say something when I'm not actually believe it so I'm gonna leave it there so there is other Norwegian doing an Ironman soon and we just saw his last video here in the car and um, what do you think about his debut in uh, Cozumel in, yeah, next week? I think he will do amazing. I, um, yeah, I know that he is, he is like me, we are really well trained and he has even better time to prepare for his race and uh, yeah, I don't see how he could fail so uh, maybe something like nutrition wise or muscular but his energy systems are so finely tuned now that um, if you don't come close to my time I would be really surprised so any last tips for Christian it's one week to go I think just stick to the plan Christian because I know you have such a good plan now and uh, yeah and uh, don't get too eager in the run even though you're feeling good you can do the hard part the last couple of k's it it's cool enough to run the fast and 5k so you don't have to push the limits like midway so yeah but I think you have such a good plan you don't need my advice uh, I forgot to ask you about uh, your nutrition throughout the race did you do any changes because of the temperature? It was really uh, cold during the race. And what was your plan? What did you take during during the, your first Ironman? Uh, I prefer during the drink mix instead of uh, the gels on a bike. Uh, from which brand? From Morton, of course. Morton, the best energy brand or nutrition brand out there. Like I am sponsored, but uh, I used them before I was sponsored as well. They have like this campaign. I think it was unofficially official or something and I know so many athletes using Morton without being sponsored and uh, for sure it is the best one. You can have an insane amount of uh, carbohydrates per hour without getting stomach issues and uh, that's key to racing both short and long distance. So my plan was uh, 120 grams per hour on the bike and I took 120 grams per hour on the bike so executed that perfectly. On the run, I did uh, a bit less. I did uh, 105, I think, about. Or it's kind of hard to say because in the end, I also drank some uh, Coke and Red Bull from the aid stations. So uh, I would estimate around 105. But uh, no stomach issues at all, no toilet breaks. Like I had, I had to pee on the bike, but that's not because of the the nutrition. It's because it was a bit cold and I drank a lot. So, yeah, but uh, no problems at all with the nutrition. 
Um, it's off season now. You have been uh, eager to get this off season for a long time. It's been a long season. You have been abroad 95% uh, yeah, of the year. Um, for how long and how? What will you do during this uh, this off season? Yeah, I given myself uh, November to uh, do whatever I want. Luckily, I am a guy who wants to train, so it's not going to be no training. I had a lovely mountain run today, up to, uh, up to Vikinghitten, which is my local mountain where I run. And today we're going to Haugesund, where my our, our sister is living. And I'm gonna see her new home for the first time. Uh, and I'm gonna hopefully visit some of my sponsors out in Europe. But uh, I'm still gonna train. And I'm still gonna probably train quite some hours. But it's not gonna be structured and I'm just gonna train how I feel. And uh, the big difference for me is that I don't have to perform in my off season. I am really. I really want to perform in every single session and I really have like a plan for the session and what I want to improve but for the off season I'm gonna do a session and from the outside it looks maybe like I'm training the same but my mentality is not there at all and uh, I'm just having a break so uh, and I think the knowledge that you're gonna have on off season is more important than the off season itself so now I have an off season because it's nice and and the last question yeah you have talked a little bit about it if Ironman was fun yeah you would do long distance <laughs> next year if it wasn't fun you would do short distance yeah have so, you come anything closer to an answer so what I'm gonna do next year and um, it's a hard one I am not 100% uh, sold, sold on long distance yet it was fun racing in California, but uh, no, in Florida, but uh, I think it was mostly fun because I won and because I had a good race. And for me, I had about the same fun during race in Super League, but in the Super League I was really bad, I just broke top 10. And uh, I think I still enjoy short course racing more than long course racing, even though I'm not winning there as often so to answer the questions am I gonna do the full distance world championship races next year I think this is maybe a bit controversial but I think I want to do the both uh, the St. George races and maybe skip Kona because uh, I'm not drawn into the legendary Kona Island kind of thing I'm drawn to racing the others so I don't have any more enjoyment going to Kona than just race them. And the reason why I don't want to do both is because I picture it's going to be hard to come back to, to short course racing if I have such a long campaign of full distance. But I'm not decided on this, this is not final words. So, but in my mind now, St. George and St. George. Some sad viewers now and some very happy viewers. I think that's the, um, the best decision going a little bit long and going back to short course. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you got any ideas for videos the next month during the winter or are just happy to uh, watch this uh, guy doing his things. Yeah. So let us know in the comments if there is anything. Remember to follow and um, view the ads, then we can get some money, buy a yeah. new camera because this is shaky as hell. <laughs> so I really want a camera with better stabilization. <laughs> so please watch the ads and um, like, comment, so let it this go viral. So Smash yeah. that like button and comment for the algorithm and subscribe and do your yeah. thing. Gusta doesn't have enough millions to buy me a new camera. <laughs> so. Uh, sorry about that.
Sista, 400 meter, det er mindre ned. Hele veien, hele veien, hele veien. Kom igjen! Det er bare alt sammen da. Ikke film nå, det er alt av det da. Ei, ei. Ta ned til minus. Null. Hva du har da? Null. Eller ti. Ti. Det er ti var ganske vanskelig alt da. Nei, du må holde den her, og så slipper den lysen da. Hva skjedde da da? Vi vil helt ødelagt. Jeg tror det dukket av. Det er ikke sånn at det er 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 sånn at det